everyone, this is Kate Barford in Melbourne, Australia, apprentice trainer in the Arch Ride Associate Trainer Program. This is my horse Danny Boy. This is a picture of him when I first got him, uh, so before I started doing Arch Ride. As you can see, he really has no top line at all in this photo. You can see how the underside of his neck is sort of bulging and there's no muscling um, in the top line of his neck whatsoever. Um, and as this camera goes down, you can see as well how much further his front legs are reaching in this trot than his hind legs, um, showing that he's really pulling himself along with his shoulders. And that's basically how he moved for the first uh, 18 years of his life. Um, so that did cause some damage. He, had, he has splints under both of his front knees. Um, and when I got him at this stage, he was severely uh, lame. At one stage, he was lame on all four feet. Um, the splints don't cause him any pain, and um, uh, through using arch ride training and also through uh, addressing some imbalanced hoof trimming, uh, I've been able to get him sound again and develop his top line, as you'll see in the next photo. So here you can clearly see the difference. This is after six months of Art to Ride. You can see how much his upper neck muscles have developed and how he's been able to relax those under uh, neck muscles. You can see how much further his hind end is reaching than his front end in this photo, showing that he's propelling himself along with his hind end rather than pulling himself along with his shoulders. Um, and you can see uh, how behind the saddle that area is filling in nicely. Um, so for six months of our to ride, and also only six months of him being in the bridle, before that I was doing all my work in a rope halter, I'm really pleased with his progress. Um, you can also see his, uh, his abs engaging here and lifting up. And uh, he's over his back in this photo as compared to the other photo where he was completely hollow in that trot. And I can tell you this is much more comfortable to ride. Uh, than his old trot was. So here's a video that I thought I would include in here so that we can track his progress over time. This was taken on the same day as that photo of the trot that I just showed you. You can see uh, the development of his upper neck muscles. You can see his under neck muscles are still developed, but after 18 years of pulling himself along with his shoulders, um, they're not just going to go away in six months. Um, and uh, one area I would really like to see him develop more is behind the wither. He hasn't quite lifted up through the wither yet, um, which can make saddle fitting challenging as well because you don't have that sort of platform to hang the saddle off in the front. Um, but his loin area has really developed quite a lot in the past six months. And uh, looking at his hind end here, he used to just have two big swollen muscles on the top of his hind end, which have now blended in um, uh, to his other hind end muscles. Um, so he looks much stronger behind now. And as we come around this side, again from this angle, you can see that he still has some top line development to go behind the wither, and his back is still a little bit dropped there, but his loin area is developing quite nicely. Um, and he still needs to sort of lift up through the, the core. <clears throat> so once again, for six months of uh, Art to Ride, I'm really happy with his progress. And I'd like to come back to uh, this video, you know, in another six months time and see if we can compare the development. And coming around the front here as well, uh, you can see that his chest has actually filled out quite a lot. If you go and look at that first photo, um, kind of had a withered away looking chest and he was very towed in in the front. Um, through body work and through developing that um, chest muscle, he actually, his the degree of his toadedness in the front has improved. Um, so something that's usually thought of as a sort of conformational defect, you can actually improve slightly with this work. So now I have an in-hand video for you, and uh, I always like to start by asking my horse to step away from me. And uh, 
What's interesting here is that in my previous video, which was I think was two or three months uh, into the Archeride uh, training with Danny Boy, uh, it took a minute or two to even get the first deep stretch, whereas now we go straight into it. And you can see he's actually stepping under himself um, much, much nicer now. Only recently have I been able to ask him for any sort of uh, lateral bend. So up until this six month point, I've been working on just the longitudinal bend, getting him to get over his back, lift up his core, and uh, get into this steep stretch that his hind e his hind legs can really come through. And um, I haven't been able to get much lateral bend, uh, asking him to really cross under himself very much. Um, but now I can do that just a little bit. Um, the other thing I'd like to note in this video as it goes on is the improvement in the, his consistency. So he's gotten a lot more consistent in the stretch um, in the past few months, which in my previous video uh, I said was my goal for him. So I'm really happy with uh, our progress on that front. Now, as we come along that long side, you'll see the first couple, couple times that we do, um, he brings his head up, and that's because I'm trying to ask him for a little bit of a leg yield over to that fence. And uh, at this stage, when I do ask him for a little bit more lateral bend, he will often bring his head up. Um, but here you can see he gets really nice and loose in the stretch, and the activity starts to get a little bit better. So at the beginning of this work, uh, the activity was a little bit lacking, but I don't tend to push him very much uh, for more activity. Um, it tends to happen as he loosens up throughout the pro uh, throughout the process. As he gets into this stretch, um, his muscles stretch and loosen up and he can take longer strides. And I'm not looking for more speed, I'm looking for him to cover more ground with each stride that he takes. Um, so it's sort of like, you know, if, if you do yoga, that first forward fold, you might not get all the way down and touch your toes, but as you do it a few more times, you start to loosen up uh, your lower back muscles and be able to reach all the way down. So in order for him to be able to reach all the way through with his legs and cover more ground, he's got to loosen up a little bit first. So I'm really happy with how uh, deep the stretch is here and how much he's tracking up behind and coming through and getting engaged over his, his top line. And notice how my hands are lifting up, uh, mimicking where they would be if I was riding and how I'm keeping the outside rein back toward the wither as much as possible, uh, which is one of the more difficult things to do with this in hand work. Um, but one thing I see sometimes in people who are just starting this work is that the inside rein is angled downwards uh, to try and get the horse to uh, bring his head down. But we don't want to pull the horse's head down. We want to send the horse forward from behind so that he uh, naturally reaches down with his neck. And then our hands are there to <clears throat> keep him straight so that he doesn't overbend uh, from his neck, uh, but also to give him something to reach into. Uh, that's a really nice stretch there. Uh, something to give him to reach into to add some a little bit of resistance to the stress, stretch, just like there's resistance in yoga stretches, in order to then um, uh, cycle that energy back through the body rather than letting it, him sort of fall forward onto his front end. And it's just a weight of the rain contact. I'm not pulling on him at all here. And again, he got had a couple of nice uh, steps laterally there. I don't ask him for more than two or three uh, lateral steps very often. Um, and that I was clearly happy with that. So I'm going to give him a treat here and change sides. So I'm once again going to ask him first, I'm just going to check and see if all of my cues work by asking him to uh, step away from me. So first I'll ask for just a little bit of um, flexion towards me and uh, then I'll ask him to step over and away from me. 
and uh, I think he has a scratch here. I'm a little bit lenient with him about uh, scratching. So I get a little bit of um, flexion towards me there, but then he wants to have a scratch. And as Will says, uh, don't beat, repeat. So once he's done scratching, we'll just try again. So here we go, I get a little bit of flexion towards me. I'm gonna give him a tap with the whip. And there he goes, he steps under um, himself quite nicely there. And now that the shoulder's leading, I can get a couple more steps of leg yield here. And he comes right down into the stretch. So I'll use a few different kinds of lateral movements with him for a purpose. Um, I will ask him to step laterally under himself in order to get him to um, uh, engage his core and engage his top line more, I might ask him to step over uh, in a bit of a leg yield to widen the circle. I might ask him to do a leg yield from the center line out towards the fence, or I might ask him for a little bit of a shoulder four, just uh, getting him to angle his hind end towards the fence. I think I'm sort of starting to do that a little bit here. Um, so I, he doesn't cross under very much, but all I need is a couple steps over to help him stay over his back and, and maintain this deep stretch, which is really um, the purpose of the lateral work for us at this stage. And each step that he takes where he's uh, reaching deeply under himself um, is developing his top line muscles that we need in order for him to be strong to ride. Now this is interesting, his head's up a little bit here and look at how stiff his hind end is, but when he comes into this trot, look at how much more fluid his move, sorry, into this stretch, look at how much more fluid his movement is behind. That's really what we're looking for. That's a really nice loose stretch there. Sorry, I didn't have a cameraman with me this time, so I just had to put it on the fence and do my best to stay within the camera. You can see as he comes around this side how loose his pole is, his jaw is, all the way through to his hind end. And the activity is better now. As I said, as he loosens up, the activity improves. Um, and I just try to in the early parts of the session just maintain uh, a rhythm so if he tries to slow down on me I'll tap him with the whip but because I want to maintain the rhythm and then just slowly let him open up so that his stride covers more ground like it is here it looks really nice so the main thing I really wanted to share was um, his improvement in consistency. And as you can see here, he's just gotten so much more consistent since the last video. Down this long side, I'm asking just for a little bit of shoulder four. Asking him to tip that hind end towards the fence and cross under as much as he can for a couple strides. And that just even improves the stretch more. So I never consider walking uh, in hand you know, to be wasted time because each step that he takes here is is developing those top line muscles that we need to ride and is training him the cues that we'll need to uh, use to ride. The first time I rode him with the dressage whip, there was no problem at all because we had already done so much in hand work with it. Here the angle is a little bit better on that shoulder four and he's actually crossing under himself a little bit. And I was really happy with that. Um, that's one of the better shoulder fours he's ever done, so I give him a treat here, and that's where we end the session. And I did clean the paddock afterwards, so sorry about that. But I appreciate you guys sharing this with me. Um, hopefully you can see an improvement in him, and uh, this in-hand video helps you with your own in-hand work. Um, 
Once again, this is Kate Barkford, Apprentice Trainer in the Art to Ride Associate Trainer Program. Thank you.